Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, and I'll be hosting today's show once again. Uh, first graphic here is today's fire danger map, and we've got 88 active fires going, and that's an increase of about three from yesterday. And then total acres impacted statewide, 94,514, and that's an increase of over 4,000 acres from yesterday can see uh, fire danger has kind of expanded from what we had yesterday and high to very high fire danger extending from the uh, southern or the southeastern Brooks Range area and across the upper Yukon Valley right on down the Yukon River Valley there all the way out to the southwest coast and then extending up across the Nolato Hills there eastern Norton Sound area out to the coastline and a little bit of a increase there over the far eastern Seward Peninsula area and definitely an increase in the extreme fire danger around just about all the greater Fairbanks area, a little bit out to the west and northwest there toward Tanana, and then uh, an increase over the upper Yukon Valley there where the Porcupine, Yukon River converge, and then also down toward uh, Eagle. Otherwise, pretty low south of the mountains, uh, Copper River Basin, and where some rain, wetting rains have fallen in the last 12 hours, Paxson picking about a tenth of an inch. Next chart here showing uh, the hazardous weather graphic. Actually, that's a red flag warning there for the uh, middle Tan middle Kuskokwim Valley, I'm sorry. And that's uh, for due to lightning that's going on currently there over the Kuskokwim Valley. And that uh, red flag warning is out until 10 p.m. this evening. Could see gusts uh, locally to 30 miles an hour in and around the thunderstorm activity and not ex really expecting too much in the way of any wetting or soaking rains with those thunderstorms and a lightning strike striking away from the, s the rain shaft itself uh, could ignite uh, quite a few more fires. So we could see a big increase uh, here over the, uh, well, this evening. And then things are expected to improve after 10 p.m. Moving on, satellite pictures showing a weak circulation there along the Arctic coast, kind of pulling northward into the Arctic Ocean this afternoon. That was still bringing some light rain showers to the central Arctic coast and the uh, Barrow area. Otherwise, uh, not too bad. Uh, fog and low clouds to a minimum there along the Arctic coast and uh, areas away from the uh, coastline warming into near or into the lower 60s this afternoon. But uh, right on the coast, Kaktovik still hanging in the uh, uh, or actually central Arctic coast still in the 30s, most everyone else uh, out of the 30s into the 40s or lower 50s and then 60s, lower to mid over the North Slope area. South of the Brooks Range, even warmer temperatures warming in the lower 80s over the upper Yukon Valley this afternoon. Uh, pretty good sunshine uh, with 70s extending westward all the way to uh, Koyuk there near Norton Bay and up in toward the Kobuk Selwick Valley area and 70s also Kenai Peninsula, South Central Alaska, Manuscus, the Sitna Valley, lower to mid 70s, 60s along the or near any open water location. We've got thunderstorms developing this afternoon over the uh, 40 mile country, Upper Tana Valley. Most concentration of lightning strikes are still east of Fairbanks and another zone in that uh, cloud area over the northern Kuskokwim Valley there, west of the Yukon River area. And that's uh, area where the red flag warning is out and then you increase the sunshine once again down toward Bristol Bay and over toward Bethel but a lot of low clouds fog weak system there over the Alaska Peninsula still bringing some light rain to the St. George area as well as on Alaska and areas of the Alaska Peninsula but amounts quite light and Kodiak for the most part driving you can see an increase in the clouds there maybe some showers developing over the island itself but on the light side and the southeast coast uh, cloudy mostly cloudy areas of light rain showers with uh, Ketchikan Metlakatla both picking up two tenths of an inch of precipitation today and about half of that falling at Wrangell some areas not seeing anything at all and the 
uh, some areas could see a few breaks and a few sun breaks this afternoon, but that's uh, kind of the exception more than the rule. On the chart today, you can see the thunderstorms uh, popping all the way out to the southwest coast. If they haven't, they probably will uh, before too long <clears throat> and possibly up over the Nelato Hills, but really widespread over the uh, Cuscombe Valley area and then back east of uh, Fairbanks over the 40 Mile Country, Upper Tanaw Valley, and some showers along that trough over the Eastern Brooks Range could develop into an isolated thunderstorm or two with the taller clouds. That's just a slight chance, otherwise uh, fair on the Arctic coast there with that low pulling off and whatever shower activity has ended or will end if it hasn't already. Showery along the Panhandle, mostly cloudy skies there. High pressure basically dominating the Chukchi Sea down into the northern Bering Sea with a center back over the western southwest Bering. Uh, about 1,015 millibars. That's just resulting in a lot of light winds and areas of low clouds and fog. Weak trough there bringing a little bit of moisture into the Pribilof Islands and then a weakening low there near Unalaska Island bringing light rain, fog, and drizzle from uh, Dutch Harbor up the Alaska Peninsula and then those showers possibly developing mostly southwest Kodiak Island and along the Alaska Peninsula over the uh, Lucian Mountains there. And for tonight, uh, not much change. Uh, showers will be on the decrease. They'll persist over the northern panel. Should end over the southern areas, but don't look for much clearing. Low clouds and fog coming quite widespread over the Gulf of Alaska with those light wind conditions. Lack of much gradient at all. Light northeast flow probably will keep it mostly clear over the Seward Peninsula up into the northwest part of the state. Western North Slope could see a few breaks into the Kobuk Koyukuk Valley. Thunderstorms persisting this evening, but on the decrease with showers though lingering throughout the night into tomorrow morning, especially along the trough axis from that 1,004 millibar low there over the west central interior and the trough extending down toward Nunavak Island and still risk of some thunderstorms over the Eastern Brooks Range. 40 mile country, but dry for South Central Alaska and the North Gulf Coast with varying amounts of clouds and still a chance of light rain, fog, or maybe some drizzle for Kodiak Island, but nothing significant, nothing heavy, maybe some flow or flying conditions. Alaska Peninsula kind of unsettled as well as the Eastern Aleutians, weak trough keeping it unsettled for the Pribilofs. Light winds, low clouds and fog on the increase, possible anywhere over the Bering Sea and all of the Aleutians. Outlook for Sunday. We've got, uh, again, thunderstorms increasing with showers, especially over the eastern interior down into the eastern Copper River Basin and back to the west there along the trough axis uh, along the Yukon River up into the Lado Hills and maybe the Koyukuk Valley, the southern slopes of the central Brooks Range. North slope should be dry, maybe partly sunny in the afternoon, low clouds and fog along the Arctic coast diminishing in the afternoon. Very weak low, keeping it damp and unsettled again with light winds, low clouds, fog, widespread IFR for the Alaska Peninsula, eastern all of the Aleutians actually, and just about all of the Bering Sea as well with uh, high pressure a little farther to the west, resulting quite light wind conditions. A weak high center there over the Gulf of Alaska, really more of a, just due to a lack of storminess rather than a presence of high pressure, but light winds, low clouds and fog due to that. Partly sunny and dry for the uh, Cook Inlet area from Kamishak and Kachemak Bays across the Kenai Peninsula, high 60s to mid 70s once again. Highs uh, near or into the lower 80s over a few isolated areas of the upper Yukon Valley, otherwise much of the interior looking at 70s tomorrow. Day much like today and Monday a day much like tomorrow will be. Maybe a little bit less in the way of thunderstorm activity and possibly a little bit more in the way of sunshine. Temperatures still 70s to near 80, warmest over the upper Yukon Valley and back into the 70s, south central Alaska, showers, thunderstorms along the Alaska Range, and then back in toward the Koyukuk Valley along that trough, possibly spilling into the Kobuk Valley. But generally dry, isolated showers, Alaska Peninsula, and the Bering Sea, no change, widespread low clouds, IFR, and again, kind of showery for the southeast coast and on the cool side. Lows tonight, uh, 30s along the Arctic coast, 40s over the North Slope, and then south of the Brooks Range, 50s with a low of 58 forecast for Fort Yukon, near 50 all the way down to the lower Yukon River Valley area, and then upper 30s there for the Bering Sea, lower 40s Pribilofs and Aleutians, mid 40s Alaska Peninsula, highs tomorrow 70s to lower 80s, followed by lows again 40s to 50s, cooler on the Arctic coast, and highs about the same on Monday. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
Moving on to flying weather, we've got some IFR off the coast of the central and eastern Beaufort Sea, and then IFR down across uh, Cape Lisburn Point Hope to Tin City through the Bering Strait, covering just about all of the Bering Sea and covering all the Aleutians and a good portion of the Alaska Peninsula. Marginal VFR, Bristol Bay. So marginal VFR up across Copper River Basin and possibly into the Tanana Valley there across the Alaska Range. IFR socked in across the uh, Panhandle and western North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island. For the afternoon, look for uh, VFR to push southward across uh, at least northern Kodiak Island from Fognac Island there. Shilkoff Strait looking good, but IFR uh, right along the uh, coast there from, say, Chiniac Marmot Bay on down towards Sitkanak and the Aleutians IFR, Bering IFR, maybe marginal for St. Lawrence Island, and then IFR up through the Bering Strait and wrapping back along the central and eastern Arctic coast, VFR in the interior and VFR for the southeast coast, back to marginal VFR with some areas, uh, or back with some areas of IFR as well as areas of VFR, mostly Lynn Canal, for Monday morning for the southeast coast. And marginal VFR up into the uh, eastern interior there, staying south of the Yukon River, but uh, almost making it there. But farther to the west, we have got marginal VFR along the uh, Yukon there, <clears throat> excuse me, into Norton Sound. IFR, Southwest Coast, Bering Sea Aleutians, Kodiak Island, and uh, no change for the North Slope and Arctic Coast. And that holds through Monday afternoon as well. But the interior looking uh, pretty good VFR-wise. Marginal VFR in Alato Hills, Norton Sound, IFR, St. Lawrence Island. And again, all of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, there's a swath of marginal VFR there for uh, Kiska and Amchitka Island. Marginal for Kodiak Island. Extending up into uh, southern Cook Inlet, Kachemak, Kamishak Bay Area, southern Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound looks pretty marginal with IFR for Montague Island and the eastern North Gulf Coast. Over toward Elfin Cove, improving down the southeast coast there, especially over the inside waters. Passes Anatuvik and Adigan, both VFR tomorrow. Lake Clark, Merrill, VFR, both passes there as well as rainy, open, but probably be some building queue along all the passes here in the afternoon, especially for Windy and Isabel Mentasta, VFR, but again, building uh, uh, showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. And for Mentasta, VFR, Tanita, VFR, Portage, uh, possible marginal VFR eastern entrance early, but otherwise a VFR day coming up there for that pass. Chilkoot and White, uh, marginal VFR, trending toward VFR. And for the freezing levels, 6,000 feet there, central Arctic coast, otherwise 8,000 feet over the interior, and 10,000 feet over the eastern upper Yukon Valley, there to about Eagle, and up to the southeastern Brooks Range slopes. And then generally about uh, 4,000 feet there, just south of the west central, east central Aleutians, otherwise 6,000 for the Bering Sea. Icing, areas of mixed icing, freezing level 16,000 feet there in the shaded areas due to the uh, building convection, especially in the latter part of the afternoon or through the afternoon building developing there across the southeast coast, Copper River Basin, into the interior, back down to the southwest coast, as well as uh, to a lesser extent, the Alaska Peninsula to the Fox Islands, probably just a slight chance of seeing some icing there. And moving on to the jet stream, Got ridging uh, from Canada extending westward into the eastern part of the state. Southeast flow of 70 knots coming up toward the panhandle uh, really diminishes there as it comes inland and picks up again southwest 50 knots eastern Arctic coast. Upper level low eastern Aleutians, another one south of the Aleutians, main Pacific jet staying south of the forecast area. And for 9,000 feet, high pressure and basically controlling the Bering Sea with light winds there from a north or northeast direction. Light winds also for the Fox Islands. Weak low southern Alaska makes for light variable wind conditions uh, right into the Gulf. And high pressure, light and variable winds for the Panhandle. 3,000 feet, same pattern, light variable winds, uh, much interior Alaska into the Gulf and the southeast coast. Uh, the stronger winds staying well south or southwest of the Queen Charlottes. And uh, Bering Sea, high pressure, light winds, that translates into no significant turbulence forecast uh, anywhere around the state, including the Bering Sea, Aleutians, Panhandle, Arctic Coast, and uh, of course all of the interior. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. 
Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us once again is Eric Stevens, our good friend from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska, based up at UAF. And thanks for joining us, Eric. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, Dave. And we love to hear about all the fascinating developments, and new and old, and how that we're using the tools here, especially around Alaska. And mm -hmm. I've got to think that, you know, satellite meteorology right now is a, a fascinating time to be involved in. If we go back to the first satellite, uh, Tyros, back in 1960, I think is when we got some of those first pictures, uh, weather and meteorology probably changed that day for a whole lot of people, and it's mm -hmm. still changing today, right? Oh, you know it. Satellite imagery is so important, and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Of course, never perfect, but especially for us in Alaska, where there are other data sets like radars and mm -hmm. weather balloons are so thinly spread, right. the satellite is the great equalizer because the satellite sees everything. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got one particular um, issue in volcanic ash detection. That's a big deal here. Yeah. You know it. If you fly an airplane into volcanic ash, uh, your jet engine might just fail. A right. And an airplane without engines is in a world of hurt. Sure. So if there's a volcano that goes off, Satellite imagery is the way to track that plume of ash mm -hmm. and to tell pilots this is where you need to not be right. to avoid this ash plume. And uh, there's a, a phrase out there, what's the difference? What's you know, the what's difference? the difference? Okay. Well, it turns out, what we're going to discuss today, that the difference is everything. There's a technique called channel differencing. Okay. That if you take one piece of the spectrum of what the satellite detects, and a slightly different wavelength of that spectrum, even though those two images might look similar, magical things happen when you subtract one from the other huh. and they reveal information that was already there, but it was hard to find until you did that subtraction. That sounds like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure when he's got those fancy glasses <laughs> and he's flipping one up and back and forth. I mean, is this what we're talking about? Look, look. Let's go more highbrow and talk okay. Michelangelo. Oh, so apparently okay. Michelangelo <laughs> made some amazing sculpture and yeah. someone said, Michael, that's amazing. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's reply uh, allegedly was, well, you know, in that rock, the statue was already in there. Right. I just scraped away the unnecessary bits. In satellite meteorology, yeah. sometimes there are meteorological features that are in the data, but you can't see it until you combine or difference some of the channels. Okay. And we've got a case, good old uh, Pavlov volcano, right. goes off now and then. Sure. And uh, you can observe directly uh, a picture of the volcano, you know, just take it with your iPhone, yeah. you can see a volcano going off. Yep. Right, but if you want to get the broad view, we need satellite mm -hmm. to do that. Now, there are a couple of wavelengths that we can look at. Wait. So what's a wavelength? What that's, a wavelength? The, yeah. that's the amount of space between a peak and a valley and another peak uh, in a certain part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at 12 micron wavelength uh -oh. and 10.8 micron wavelength. What is a micron? So what's a micron? Yeah, we're getting into the geek department now. <laughs> a micron is a unit of length, and it is quite tiny. We're looking at what's called long wave uh, wavelengths, okay. but it takes 25,000 of these microns to make an inch. Uh, a human Whoa. blood cell is about five microns across. So when we're talking about 12 micron imagery as allegedly long wave, well, that's relative. Pretty to, short for light. Yeah, yeah. it's other okay. part of the, uh, it's, it's just a, an expression for the, the spectrum there. Okay. So we can look at a, at a 12 micron image, say a satellite image. At 12 microns, we're seeing a heat signature here, really. And, and the way this color enhancement works is the, the yellow and the red stuff is, is high cold clouds down mm -hmm. here over the Gulf of Alaska into South Central. And if you were set, you were asked, where do you find the uh, volcanic ash plume in this image? Hey, where do you find the volcanic plume in this image? Eric? It's hard to do. I'm yeah. not sure I could find it. If you, <laughs> if you were to look at this image and just say, show me the, what, you, what jumps out at you here, I'd say, well, n nothing really. Well, let's okay. look. So 12 micron doesn't help us. Okay. Let's look at 10.8 microns. All right. All right, look at that. It's practically the same image. So mm. where's this volcanic ash? Can't find it at 12 microns, can't really see it at, at 10.8. Mm -hmm. But when we take subtract one channel from the other, oh. magically, the huh. plume appears. The color enhancement here yeah. uh, highlights the ash in blue. Wow. The data, the information was already there, but we couldn't find it until we subtract one channel from another. Very it's, interesting. It's almost magical. Similarly, let's say you're looking for fog up on the north slope. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a foggy neighborhood. Sure. Um, in 11 micron and 3.9 micron, we've got a 3.9 micron image here. Um, 
it's a big fuzzy blur over Barrow. We, mm -hmm. we can't see where the fog is. But the information is lurking in there waiting for us to, to reveal it. All we have to do is find that difference between the 11 micron and the 3.9, and then this image huh. becomes this image, and the fog bank jumps right out, and you can see it up there at Barrow. Now, every you got to choose the right tool for the job, sure. like they say. You open your right. toolbox, all kinds of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. What do we need for this particular task? If you want to find volcanic ash, we look at 12 and 10.8 micron, find that difference. If you want to okay. find fog, we'll look at 11 and 3.9 micron, find that difference. It's great, different tools for different jobs. Of course, there's always caveats and gotchas, but this <laughs> fog procedure, yeah. it only works at night, because when the sun oh. comes up, it, it gets in the way. Um, so every product has its strengths and limitations, and in meteorology, the challenge is using the right tool for the right job, and these are some of those tools. And discovery is still happening, even with meteorology. The weather's been around for a long time, but the yeah. tools that are being developed to understand the meteorology is a fascinating and still very new science. It's, a, it's such a young science. We've come so far. I'm getting old enough now that I can literally <laughs> say that, you know, when I was a boy, we didn't have this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and there's new things happening all the time. New satellites will be launched in coming years that will have better instruments than ever before. It's an exciting time, and this is so helpful for Alaska because satellites mm -hmm. help fill in the gaps between other ways obser of the observing the weather. Satellites are a great equalizer for Alaska. Yeah, and help so many people stay safe in so many ways every you know day it. up here in the last frontier. Yeah, it's what it's all about, protecting lives and property. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. We love to hear about this fascinating information, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it just makes me want to go watch satellite pictures all day. So <laughs> hopefully sure we're inspiring more people to do the same thing, and uh, just be curious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, looking at today's sea ice analysis. Uh, kind of some changes, the sea ice free area extending a lot farther through, uh, beyond the Bering Strait of the Chukchi Sea and off the western Arctic coast there than it was yesterday. Still some uh, shorefast along the north side of the Seward Peninsula and less in the way of shore ice on the western Arctic coast, but uh, south of the Barrier Islands, uh, shorefast ice there, north of the Barrier Islands, some thinner ice. And for the coastal water forecasts, pretty light along the coast tomorrow. Southeast winds 10 knots, seas 5 feet. For the south coast, north side there, south at 10 with 5 foot seas. And southerlies 10 to 15 knots for the central inside water areas with seas running 2 to 3 feet. And for Monday, bring it up to 20 knots in the afternoon for Lynn Canal with seas at about 4 feet. Otherwise, uh, Light southerlies, 5 to 10 knots, central southern inside waters with pretty slight seas. Variable winds, 10 knots on the south coast with seas at 6 feet. West, 15 with 5 to 6 foot seas for the north coast. And Cook Inlet, south winds, 15 knots for the day Sunday and southeast, 15, 3 foot seas. Kamishak Bay, Barren Islands, pretty light winds out of the west at 10 and west-southwest breeze at 15 knots for the North Gulf Coast. Seas really laid down pretty good there from the Barren Islands all the way into Prince William Sound at uh, calling it for three feet where the winds in the sound will be variable to southwest but only 10 knots. Look for south winds at 10 knots for Prince William Sound on Monday. Seas two feet. We're going up to 20 knots now for the North Gulf Coast out of the southwest. Five to six foot seas. Also southwest 20 for the Barren Islands with four foot seas. South to southwest 15 for Cook Inlet, southeast 15 Kamishak Bay. Shellacoff Strait, northwest 10 knots, seas 2 feet east side of Kodiak, easterlies of 15 knots. And Sitkanak to Cape Sarachev, winds will be light from the east at 10 with 4 to 5 foot seas. And then Cape Sarachev up the uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula, including Bristol Bay, light northwest wind at 10 knots, 1 to 2 foot seas. <clears throat> and for Monday, Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak, southwest breeze at 10 knots with 5 foot seas, and northwest at 10 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, Bristol Bay southwest at 10, seas 2 feet, 15 knots for Shillikoff Strait out of the southwest, and southerlies at 20 for the east side of Kodiak Island. And for the Aleutians on Sunday, all winds of light 10 knots out of the east at 10 knots with seas running uh, anywhere from two to three feet on the Bering Sea side of the islands to four to five feet on the Pacific side. 
Moving on to Monday, still light winds and all southerly now at 10 knots with uh, seas running five feet out west and three to six feet for the east central and areas on the Pacific side of the islands. Moving up to the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, northwest at 15, light southerlies for the Perbolofs, 10 knots, two foot seas, north 15, St. Matthew Island, Yukon Delta, a little more of a breeze as well as Norton Sound, north at 20, northwest 20 knots for St. Lawrence Island. Outlook for Monday, northwest 15 there for St. Lawrence Island, the three foot seas, northwest at 10 for the southwest coast, south 10 for the Perbolofs, west 15, St. Matthew Island. And the Beaufort Sea, uh, 10 knot winds for the central and east side out of the east or northeast and east at 15 for the western coast and kind of variable there coming around the western capes and then for the Chuck Sea Sea from Wells to uh, Cape Thompson, northwest 15. <clears throat> and then moving on to Monday, north 15, Wells to Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson, Cape Beaufort, northeast at 15, east 15, western Arctic coast and then north to east winds, but only 10 knots, two foot seas and open water areas there for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. For tonight, again, uh, light winds up there, whatever showers uh, may linger over toward the eastern north slope, isolated thunderstorm possible. Uh, more likely though, uh, upper Tanaha Valley and the Kuskokwim Valley, especially this evening. Otherwise, light rain, fog and drizzle continues at times for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula on up to the Pribilofs and maybe along the Nunavak Island area, southwest coast, some showers, but less rending over the southern Panhandle. And then for tomorrow, partly and mostly sunny, highs uh, pushing up to near or into the lower 80s, upper Yukon Valley, 70s over the interior. That'll trigger thunderstorms there over the interior, especially the mountainous terrain. Showers for the Alaska Peninsula, showers on Monday for the Panhandle again, and thunderstorms along the Alaska Range, otherwise partly and mostly sunny. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.